Hey gaming fans, so today I have another trading card game that I would like to talk about and it's Spellfire Master of the Magic. Now this game came out I believe around the same time that Magic the Gathering became uh, you know was was first released um, and if, if you're familiar with Magic the Gathering or if you played Magic uh, you know it's all about artifacts, creatures, spells, uh, a lot of stuff that was in Dungeons and Dragons. In fact um, from what I've read Magic the Gathering was a game created by Richard Garfield to be played or intended to be played in between rounds of actually playing Dungeons and Dragons as a way of passing the time, uh, which then grew into its own real thing. Uh, but Spellfire was actually created by uh, TSR, or at least released by them, um, which it says on their label there. And they were the uh, ones who originally put out the... Um, Dungeons and Dragons before Wizards of the Coast bought them out. So this game is interesting in that it plays very different from Magic the Gathering. And that's what I like about it. Um, my friend was the one who actually introduced me to this uh, back in the day when, when we were only playing Magic the Gathering. Um, he, uh, he had this game and he played it with his friends and I never even heard of it. And so he introduced me to the game, and I thought it was pretty interesting. I still think it's an interesting game because it does play its own, you know, it's got its own rules that are way different than a lot of other trading card games. So a um, few things to talk about here, like the card itself, that are pretty interesting, is that um, the the way it's created is almost like a... Uh, like a regular playing card. You know those cards like you play poker and blackjack with? It's kind of coated like a plastic coating. It's a little bit more durable and uh, got the nice rounded corners. Now the other thing that's different about Spellfire is you see here it says third edition and they marked it that way. So each backing of, of a lot of the sets had a, had a different uh, back piece. And um, that is something I remember reading about with Magic the Gathering when they first started to design the cards was would the expansions that have a different kind of backing or something different about the backing. Um, typically you don't want to do that with card games because it makes it so that the cards can be marked. If you were to play this one card in a deck that has a different backing, uh, unless you're using card sleeves, which wasn't very common back in the day uh, when these games first came out, um, you could kind of tell which card this would be based on the backing. So it kind of marks the card. So you'll notice like a lot of m m trading card games today will never do that. They'll always have the same backing. Anyways, let's get on to like the actual card game itself because this is really fun. It takes place in the world of Dungeons and Dragons and you can actually see right there. It says Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And then throughout the cards you have like Forgotten Realms and uh, Dragonlance, all the different sets that came out for Dungeons and Dragons back in the day when it was like the third edition or uh, fourth edition. I, I, I'm not sure myself, but these cards uh, interact in a way based on what world they're from, which is also interesting in that some of the cards only affect cards from certain uh, worlds. So if, if you're from Forgotten Realms, uh, for instance, he can only have an artifact on him that's also from the Forgotten Realms. Um, so you really have to pay attention. And uh, the other thing that uh, unfortunate about this card game is, you know, a lot of the, uh, the, the rules, the card text itself, were very, very vague. And, and they really left it up to you to really figure them out. Um, and that you were supposed to know certain effects and abilities based on the card itself, based on the creature itself. Uh, so not everything was all always written out for you to fully understand. You have to understand the difference between an offensive spell and a defensive spell. What kind of a spell would be offensive? What would be defensive? It doesn't always label it on the card. So anyways, let's get to some of the actual cards themselves. I don't want to drag this video on too long. Perhaps I can make a bunch of different videos on this. Like we could just kind of scratch the surface. But anyways, uh, so the, the, your typical uh, creatures that you have... You got your monsters, which are the red symbol there, the monster symbol. Your wizards, which is like a book, a spell book, I guess. Your clerics, which uh, have this kind of shield. And your heroes, which is a uh, like a soldier's helmet, um, knight helmet or what, what have you. Um, so each of these can, can kind of do their own thing. Uh, heroes, not 
and heroes and monsters can't really do much on their own, but uh, wizards can cast wizard spells, which is this one here, for instance, time stop, and um, clerics can, can cast cleric spells. And what makes it different, say, from Magic the Gathering is you actually have to have one of these guys on your playing field in order to play a wizard spell or a cleric spell. So you can't just simply have her in your hand. You have to actually summon her to the field, which they call a pool in this game. As long as she's in the pool, you can now cast cleric spells. And as long as he's uh, your wizard or wizard character, whichever wizard you're playing is in, the, in, is in play, he can cast uh, wizard spells. Another thing that's interesting about this game is each spell has a timing of when they can be played. Well, most of them do. Uh, you'll see up in here it says uh, defense 3, 4, and 5. So that means this, this card is a defensive card, and it can be played between the, the uh, turn of, or not turn, but phase of your turn, the third phase, the fourth phase, and the fifth phase. So it's, it's really kind of the same thing as uh, sort of like Magic the Gathering, where you have your your draw phase, and then you have your uh, summon to the to the pool phase, and you have your battle phase, and then you have your end phase. So it just kind of tells you when these cards can be played. There's no tapping in this game, so you never turn a card sideways. Uh, like, so when you attack, you don't attack side, turn her sideways to attack. So that's a little bit different about this game. Another thing that's different about this game is there's no cost. Um, all these cards can just be dropped down onto the board. So this is a power, like, this is power, seven there in the corner. So whether he's a seven or a two or a one, uh, you can just play him down. Also, during, uh, when you go to battle your opponent, you can actually just throw it right down from your hand and declare an attack. You don't have to summon it to the field, wait in turn, or anything. So during the battle phase, you can just slap this guy down and attack your opponent. But what you're attacking in this game is a little bit different. You're not attacking the, the player, you're attacking their realms, which I will get to in a second. So other cards that we have in this game, which make it a little bit more unique, is we have the artifacts. A lot different than the artifacts in, in Magic the Gathering. These always have to be attached to a, a character. It has to be from the same world. So if it said, uh, um, you know, if it said uh, Forgotten Realms, for instance, there, you would have to only equip it to a, a, a Forgotten Realms character. And they can only have one art, artifact attached to them. So if you had this character out, for instance, you would attach the artifact while he's in the pool and it gets you whatever bonus or, you know, whatever it does. Then you also have magical items, which are very similar. They, they attach to the character and just give whatever powers. And then you have the primary thing you're probably going to be using is uh, your allies. Uh, this is known by the, or shown by that axe symbol. Uh, it tells you how much the power boost is, and it tells you what the effect is. So when you go to a battle, uh, you, you, would, you would declare your attacker. Uh, if your opponent has a defender, then you, uh, you check the two numbers. You check yours, you check theirs. Uh, whoever is higher is winning the battle. So the losing person, which is usually if it's a tie, it would be uh, the attacker, would have to add a card to the monster you're attacking with to boost it up. So he's up to, say with this one, he's up to nine now. And now, now it goes back to the opponent to be able to uh, beef it up beyond nine. So you'd be able to play a bunch of cards until you, you've pretty much uh, beat, you're beating the opponent. Then it goes back to the other player. So that's a little bit different about this game because you're only attacking with one creature at a time. You're not attacking with all your creatures. Then we also have these uh, cards called event cards. These are sort of like spell cards in a way, uh, like if you play Magic the Gathering, for instance, like a sorcery or an instant. Um, and of course, a lot of them do tell you when it can or cannot be played. And then they all have varying effects. Like this one says, destroys one realm of the player's choice. Uh, so, uh, like I said, I'll get to what realms are, but this is uh, you know, a pretty powerful spell in this game. Well, sorry, event in this game. So now to the main cards, the, uh, um, the events. This is how you win the game. So each turn you're allowed to play, or sorry, not events, uh, realms. Each turn you're allowed to play one realm. Uh, sort of like in Magic where you're allowed to play one land. But these are actually important in that once you uh, assemble six realms, you win the game. And you do that by playing your first realm there, 
at the top, kind of of, of your uh, board or wherever you're playing. Then you'd play the second one underneath it, and you'd play the third one like that, and then your fourth, fifth, and then your sixth. And once you've laid down your sixth realm, you win the game. So your opponents are going to try and stop you by attacking your realms. And they can only attack the one that's exposed. So they cannot attack this or this. They have to attack that unless they have an ability that allows them to attack. Uh, it's like there's some that have flying and, and land walk that allows them to fly over and, and attack something else. Otherwise, they have to attack the very top one. So they select their uh, champion, what they call this in, in uh, this game. They're called champions. So you check, you, you select your champion, you, you declare the attack, then the opponent decides if they're going to either allow you to attack it or not attack, or, or, or sorry, um, defend it or not defend it. If they defend it, that's when the battle happens, and like I said, that's when you start to, um, you, you go through the process of uh, beefing up your characters until there's a winner declared. If nobody, um, say he attacks and he, he doesn't block, the realm gets raised, which means it gets turned face down. You can still have realms being built, but this is no longer counted as a face-up realm, which means it's not you're not going to win if you get all six realms out on the field until this is put back up into, you know, face-up position. So uh, there is a lot of strategy involved in this game of when to attack and when not to attack. And, of course, during your turn, you're allowed to, if you do not have a realm in your hand to play, and there's a face-down a, a face realm, you can discard three cards from your hand to um, activate like or flip it back face-up, and then if it has any effects or whatever. So that's pretty much the concept of this game. There is a um, another card I didn't show you, and that's a holding. Uh, these are like equipment cards for the realm, or their attachments. So you would attach it to the realm like this. And it, again, it has to be from the same world. Um, but so you just attach it and it just kind of gives it an extra, you know, ability. And of course, if that realm ever gets flipped down, this uh, holding goes to the discard pile. The other thing that's interesting about this game, and you're probably saying, you know, for, for discarding, say three, uh, each turn you draw three cards. You're not just drawing one. So this game does build you up a hand pretty fast, and it replenishes really fast when you're drawing three cards a turn. Uh, plus, there's a lot of uh, decent cards in this um, in this game that can get you to draw cards. Like this um, this one here, this realm is when you play this realm, you immediately uh, draw three cards. So you know there's a lot of cards like that. There's even a spell or a uh, an event that allows you to draw five cards. So there is some pretty nutty cards in this uh, in this game. Uh, there were quite a few sets that came out. I actually um, have this uh, reference guide, if you can see that, uh, which is pretty good. I mean, it, it does kind of go through a lot of the uh, cards in that that are um, available, all the different sets that are available, and of course at the very beginning it goes through all the rules. So there's a lot of complicated rules to read. But, um, you know, there's different variants on how to play the game. Uh, but pretty comprehensive guide on, on playing this game. Really cool. Anyways, yeah, I just like literally scratched the surface on this game. If you're um, interested in, in learning more about it, I could definitely do more videos on it. Um, you know, if people actually want to see more, more videos on this. Because I think this is a pretty cool game. Um, too bad it's, you know, it's, it's a dead CCG in a sense that it's, it's no longer being created. Um, I'm sure Wizards of the Coast somehow own the, the, the rights to this game because they bought out uh, the TSR, the, the Dungeons and & Dragons. Um, and they, they probably would never bring this out because they have Magic the Gathering to, to worry about. Anyways, let me know what you think of Spellfire or if you've ever played it. I think it's a pretty cool game. You know, it's, it's different for a change. It's something unique and uh, interesting to try out. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Hope you subscribe. Talk to you later.